Good morning, church. Good morning. So good to be here with you this morning on this beautiful November Sunday. It is the last Sunday in November and therefore the first Sunday of Advent. Amen? Amen. 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 And I like um, this uh, paragraph that uh, Pastor Will included at the beginning. Uh, this is um, the shining additions to our Advent and Christmas visuals remind us that we are called to reflect the sacred each and every day. We are called to reflect the sacred each and every day. Incarnation is a word that means that God's presence came to dwell among all people. And we believe this happened in a special way in the birth of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we've got our um, monitors working. The microphones are working. The Zoom uh, folks at home can see what we're doing. We're, we're going this morning. The Spirit is with us already. So I want to welcome you this morning to this first Sunday in Advent. This morning we celebrate the ministries of East County Shared Ministry, an ecumenical congregation with Congregationalists and Presbyterians and others, members and non-members together on a journey of faith. We are open and affirming congregations where all are welcome. And we love to say, no, no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Yes, we are all welcome here. This is God's table, and we are welcome at the table. As we acknowledge the lands we work, serve, and play upon, let us remember the first inhabitants of these lands. This month we are learning more about the people we now call indigenous Australians and their diversity. The largest Aboriginal people today is the Pichanjanjara, yeah, who live in the area around Uluru, Ayers Rock, and south into the Anangu, Anangu Pichanjanjara. Ooh, my goodness! In in South Australia, while the second largest Aboriginal community are the um, errant, errant people who live in and around Alice Springs. The third largest are the Luritja, who live in the lands between the two largest just mentioned. The Aboriginal languages with the largest number of speakers today are the Pichanjajara, Warpiri, and Arente. Indigenous Australians are the original inhabitants of the Australian continent and nearby islands, and these people's descendants. Indigenous Australians are distinguished as the either Aboriginal people or Torres Strait Islanders, who currently together make up about 2.6% of Australia's population. The Torres Strait Islanders are indigenous to the Torres Strait Islands, which are at the northernmost tip of Queensland near Papua New, New Guinea, the term original, Aboriginal has traditionally been applied to indigenous inhabitants of mainland Australia, Tasmania, and some of the other adjacent islands. The use of the term is becoming less common, which names preferred, with names preferred by the various groups becoming more common. There is great diversity between different indigenous communities and societies in Australia each with its own unique mixture of cultures, customs, and languages. In present-day Australia, these groups are further divided into local communities. The population of indigenous Australians at the time of permanent European settlement has been estimated at between 318,000 and 750,000, with a distribution being similar to that of the current Australian population, with the majority living in the southeast centered along the Murray River. Those indigenous Australians are seen as being broadly related. There are significant differences in social, culture, and linguistic customs between the various indigenous Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander groups. So, 
our brothers and sisters from Australia. We lift them up this morning as we come to worship. We have announcements this morning. Let's see if I can read them. Um, let's see, December 4th, Pastor Will leads the second Sunday of Advent in this series of reflecting on the sacred. Um, and I believe there's going to be the Advent party at, uh, on December 4th from 4 to 5.30. Do you have anything to say about that? As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> December 4th at 4 o'clock, we're having our third annual Zoom Advent party, complete with music, with games, with fun, with crafts. Um, and you'll be invited uh, to recall the famous traditional dinner of fried chicken and um, green beans and other stuff. Um, but we do have our artist in residence, Mary, um, who is going to lead us with the craft. I think she may have something to say about that. Yes, welcome. Mm -hmm. Good morning, yes. The craft is going to be something all of you can do, whether you're on Zoom or sitting in your kitchen or whatever. So um, it's going to, it, there's a sample of it in the Stoneman room. So when you go to coffee hour, look on the blonde piano and you will see a couple of jars with a candle in it. That's what we're going to be making. So you have a jar, I'm sure of some sort. You have a candle, I'm sure even if it's half burned out. Um, and then you're going to, going to fill the jar with something to hold the candle. Well, I've done two of them. One of them has popcorn in it and one of them has rice in it. So you can use just about anything to stuff the, the jar. And we'll do it on Zoom. We'll do it, Debbie and I will be on Zoom with you and showing you how. So we'll do that and it'll be a good time. Oh, I wanted to say one more thing about fellowship. We are in the Stoneman room now doing fellowship. So be sure and come over there. And we also need sign-ups for people to bring stuff. So if you could, there's a sign up on the wall on to, to the right of the coffee pot. So look at that and see when you can, um, can um, participate and help us out with that. that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. I, and I have some more to add about fellowship. I have with me today, are you sitting down? <laughs> the church directory. Yay! Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, so here's the thing. I'm, it, I just went ahead and printed what I had, even though probably 75% of you never responded with updated information on your contact. Mm. So my caveat is I will only accept corrections in writing. If you, have, if you find something in there that isn't correct, passing me in the hall and saying my phone number is correct, that won't work. You have to write it down and give it to me or leave it in the office. So help yourself. I will have them in at fellowship hour. Um, my plan is to renew them every six months with whatever corrections have been accumulated. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Let's celebrate some birthdays. Uh, Peter Tedeschi, Jeanette Vega, Babs Dexham, is she here? <laughs> uh, uh, Nina Javier, Judy Moore, Betty Panky, David Cameron, Laura Ferguson, and Audrey Lamb. Wow, wow that's a lot. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. And, and more. All right. Uh, sacred conversation. Oh, wait a minute. Anniversaries. Reverend Tom and Nancy Kudiv um, are celebrating an anniversary on the 1st of uh, December. And then our sacred conversation group will not meet um, on Tuesday the 29th, but um, I'm assuming on the following Tuesday. Happy hour on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Uh, oh, that says the 23rd, though, doesn't it? Okay, so it must be the, 20, the 30th, yes. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? First, second, third, fourth Sunday. Oh, look at that, third Sunday of Advent, Choir Sunday. Um, and I should say, we'll have two choirs on that Sunday. We'll have the Chantel Choir, and we'll have the Bell Choir. So that's going to be a very special Sunday for all of us. 
Um, and you have your announcements sent to you via email, so look at those. Uh, look them over because this is a very active congregation and we have much work to do and much to celebrate. Amen? Amen. 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 And we also wish to welcome today the Reverend Daniel Borsowitz. He's been with us before and he, he decided to come back which is awesome. And Daniel, Reverend Daniel is going to lead us now in the um, lighting of the peace candle. O oh God, on this first Sunday of Advent, we pray that your steadfast love may heal our wounded hearts as we prepare for the birth of the Christ child. May your love reign on earth, bringing healing and hope to a broken world desperately in need of your presence. May you bless the world with your peace, which passes human understanding. A peace so powerful it stops violence and heals alienation and transforms hate into love. May we be peacemakers in your name, and may we join the angel choir singing peace on earth, goodwill to all people. Amen. Okay, so here's the retired teacher who didn't do the homework. <laughs> when Michael said to me this morning, hey, Jane, did you run through the, you know, the, the presentation, the slides? And I said, no. <laughs> so I'm going to introduce a video that we hope is going to magically appear and we'll all get to watch it. It's um, an introduction to the series that we're following from Marsha McPhee's workshop, um, Reflecting <clears throat> the Sacred. So here it goes. Let's see. Oh. Uh-oh. I don't know how to make it louder. There's got to be a volume. It doesn't play through the, through the TVs? Hopefully you'll get to actually hear it next time we run through it. <laughs> you see what happens when Will's not here? We miss him, don't we? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're a little discombobulated this morning. Let's see if we can get bobulated okay. or combobulated. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the invitation to Advent. This year, as we approach Christmas, what if we saw the presence of the holy in all that has been, is, and always be? Right here, reflected in and through everything and everyone around us. I want to invite us to spend some quiet time at the beginning of every one of our Advent and Christmas worship experiences to soften our focus on life to blur the hard edges of our lives, to see the whole picture with our hearts, to train our hearts to love as God loves, with an all-encompassing compassion, to look at life through the reflections of the sacred. I invite you to get comfortable where you are sitting, I invite you to open your hands upward in your lap. 
close your eyes if you are comfortable doing so and take a deep breath, a deep intentional breath in and out. If it is difficult to get your mind to quiet down, if you are making shopping lists in there, it's okay. Don't judge it. Just take another breath and thank and excuse for just a moment the tasks that might be popping up on the to-do list in your brain. Take another deep breath. That's it. Take time to settle in. Bring to your mind's eye, to your memory and imagination, a time of day that you love. Is there a moment in your day where you get to catch a breath in some alone time? Or is it that you love the moment you see your kids after school? Or perhaps it is cooking in your kitchen or watering plants or some other simple, ordinary moment. Just think about that. What is that memory? What is that time of day? As you see this scene, put it in slow motion. Slow it down. Now imagine particles of light showering slowly upon it. Let this reflection of light be an, an, be an anoint, anointing of hope for seeing more and more of life through the lens of the sacred. Continue to just breathe. Listen and see with your heart. slowly. As you are ready, I invite you to stand and body your spirit and face the back as the light of hope comes into our midst. For those worshiping online, you are invited to light your first candle. You may, now, sorry. you may now face forward. The Gospel of John speaks of Christ as the true light coming into the world. And in commemoration of that coming, we light candles for the four weeks leading to Christmas and reflect on the coming of Christ. It is significant that the church has always used that language, the coming of Christ, because it speaks to a deep truth. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming, always entering a troubled world, a wounded heart. 
And so we light the first candle, the candle of hope, and dare to express our longing for peace, for healing, and the well-being of our creation. Loving God, as we enter this Advent season, we open, we open all the dark places in our lives and memories to the healing light of Christ. Show us the created power of hope. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. 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 Please remain standing and join me in the call to worship. We pray for hope this day. We pray for hope as we pray. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see each moment. We open to see each moment as a gift of the Holy Presence. As a gift of the Holy Presence. This is the gift of the Christ mystery. This is the gift of the Christ mystery. Lighting the way to hope. Lighting the way to hope. Upon this moment, upon this people, Upon this place, the Holy comes, and sacred going, bring sacred being, for sacred doing of God's plan. Please join me in the opening prayer. Living God, Christ's mystery, spirit of hope, we give you thanks for this holy moment together. As we take in the hope you offer, may we be a reflection of your light, expanding the sacred time of right now into the sacred time of always and for all time. Amen. 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 And our hymn this morning is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let us sing to the glory of God. Oh, 
of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and, and also, also with, with you. you let us offer each other the sign of Christ peace peace of Christ sacred, God's presence is poured into creation in a never-ending flow of love. We enter a time of prayer that invites us to be refilled in ways that can help us pour out our love throughout the week. All we must do in this moment is open our hearts to the Holy One. I invite you now to share your joys and concerns so that we may hear them. You may also say them silently and also for those who are on Zoom. Um, I'm not sure how we're sharing those with us today. Um, however, put them in the chat and we will make sure that we lift them up. Wonderful. Wonderful. What are your shares? Share your concerns or joys. Prayers be heard. For the Zoom folks, if you couldn't hear, Ginny announced that Judy has a birthday, but also a surgery on Wednesday. And um, Judy's niece could still use prayer, and I forget the other one. What are the joys or concerns do you have? Uh, or you go ahead. right now 
temps up into the 100, temps, temperatures up into the 102s and 103s. So just be mindful that if someone has a temperature, they are spreading germs and they should be at home. I know COVID's still around, but please remember it's flu season. Lord in our mercy, hear our prayer. Um, yes, uh, I have a couple of joys and concerns. Um, so I went down to visit my sisters um, for like a couple of days before Thanksgiving, and they seem to be doing really well. Just keep them both in your prayers. And um, also, um, I have to do a couple of tests for my colitis to see if the actual medicine is working, because it seems like it is working. Um, just lots of prayers about that. And also, um, there is a concert coming up for Oakland Interfaith family, and um, it starts on, it's on the third, and there's a lot more concerts coming up ahead after that. Um, just go to oigc.org and get your tickets. So those are my joys and concerns. Beautiful. So. <laughs> so the Zoom people can hear. Pardon? Um, so the Zoom people can only hear through your microphone. Okay. Um, I was just saying that I'm, my joy is my wife, Barbara. She spent a lot of time, a couple of days as a matter of fact, decorating our house and setting up a lot of trees and stuff like that. And we're all set for Christmas, believe it or not, and thanks to her. <laughs> Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. After nine months of war, just please remember Ukraine as they start entering a brutal winter with no electricity, no water, no heat. Just remember Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. Are there any joys or concerns from the folks out in the internet world? Any other joys or concerns today? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me. Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ on my right, Christ on my left. Christ where I lie down, Christ when I sit down. Christ when I arise. Amen. Amen. to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one 
Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have need. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us. From each one to each one, let us to holy incense. On the holy of our days, come swiftly, Mother, Father, come. For yours is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. Verses one, verses one and two. Oh, come on, come in now, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile until the storm of God. busyness of the holiday season can overrun the sense of the sacred. The irony is that setting apart time for connection with the sacred gets pushed aside in order to create the trappings of what is supposed to be the season of celebrating the presence of the holy. We will begin our Advent journey toward Christmas by emphasizing the gift of being awake to the now the gift of sacred time with God, with each other, and with those in need of hope. The first scripture reading this morning is from Romans 13, verses 11 through 14, and it's from the Message Translation. And this one really resonated with me. Make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all of your day-by-day -day obligations that you lose track of time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence, in sleeping around and dissipation, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about.
Amen. And our second uh, Christian scripture reading is from Matthew 24, verses 36 through 44. And this is from the New Revised Standard Version. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken in two. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Mm -hmm. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. All creation is a word of God. All creation speaks volumes of God. Greetings, East County Shared Ministry. I am glad to be back with you again today. I want to thank your pastor, Reverend Will McGarvey, for inviting me back here again. I must have done something right last time I was here for y'all to have me back again, or at least for Will to have me back again. You know, I want to doesn't seem like, you know, as we get into the last few months of each year um, at this time, that there's a lot of busyness going on. Rushing about, preparing for Thanksgiving. Thank goodness that's over with. You know, our days are filled with anxiety about Christmas shopping and preparing for, for Christmas Day. Braving the stores, you know, and many blessings to those of you who may have braved the stores this past Friday. You know, or perhaps some of you have actually taken on a new tradition, one that the pandemic has definitely invited many of us to do, is to shop online. That is something that I've actually started doing. It is much less stressful for me. And speaking of the pandemic, you know, the last several years have kind of done a lot of deconditioning for some of us in regards to our socializing skills. You know, it's now going to social gatherings, especially those indoors, can be fraught with some anxiety and uncertainty about how to interact with folks. For me, this past Thanksgiving, I was, uh, my partner and I were blessed to be invited to a small gathering in San Francisco, and, and I too had some of those social anxieties Thursday as we were preparing to go to this time with them. And, these, and I was worried about, what are we going to talk about? Is it going to be okay? And to, what are we going to, you know, all these things are going through my head. And I'm realizing, it's like, I know these people. One of them is also a clergy person who I've known a number of years, and and they're all lovely people, and I had nothing to be afraid of or to be concerned about. You know, we, it was also my partner's and I's first time gathering with folks indoors for an extended period of time without masks on. We all took rapid tests in the morning and, and made sure that we were safe the, week bef the previous week before. 
And, you know, for, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but this is, I work in hospice and I do this work all the time. I'm always wearing a mask. But I'm also, we were spending time close to each other and we were able to hug each other. And it was wonderful. The things that we missed, that sacred touch, that sacred time. Will you pray with me? Divine Spirit, Christ Sophia, carry my words on the four winds to spark our imaginations, to encourage our light to shine brighter and overcome the darkness, and to fill us with your unending love during our sacred time together. Amen. Emil, uh, Emil Durkheim was a French sociologist who lived in the late 1800s and he died in 1917. He is considered the father of sociology by many. His research in religion gave us the dichotomy of the sacred and the profane. I'll give you some definitions just so we all are kind of on the same, same, uh, same page here, so to speak. Um, profane is the routine aspects of our day-to-day -day existence. The sacred are the things we set apart as extraordinary, inspiring awe and reverence. According to Durkheim, religion is the practice of maintaining a distance and distinguishing between the sacred and the profane. The profane is the mundane, unholy part of life. It should not cross the boundaries that may, that of what this is sacred or come into contact with it. It is believed it will contaminate the holy in some way or another. I'm not quite sure how, but it... On the cover of today's bulletin, Fran uh, Franciscan friar Richard Rohr is quoted, and I quote, If you look at the history of all religions, they, also, they almost all begin with one massive mistake. They make a clean split between the sacred and the profane. Then all the emphasis is placed on going to sacred spaces, creating sacred time and sacred actions, and 98% of life then remains unsacred. This is the heart of the problem, end quote. Father Rohr has discussed, taught, and explored the sacred for decades. There's even a center in New Mexico that he created and founded to for people to study the sacred in all different forms of religion, not just in Catholicism or Christianity. And I agree with him. I also believe that the problem, that there is a problem with this clean split, as it were. I believe that we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. Much of the, much of the time in our lives can be seen as crossing over into the sacred. Almost anything can be sacred. A rock, a mountain, the earth, the sky, the moon, the sun, a tree, a bird, an animal. Something is considered sacred because a community, a group of individuals, or one person believes it to be sacred. On this first Sunday of Advent, it is the beginning of our sacred time of Christmas. It is a time of waiting, of anticipating, of preparing for Christmas Day. Just as the expectant family awaits the birth of a new child, so too are we waiting expectantly during this sacred time. As a hospice chaplain, I talk with families about the sacred time of waiting with their loved ones as they prepare to die. The sacredness of sitting at bedside, holding the hand of someone you love. Sitting vigil with the dying is a tradition of numerous religions and cultures. Being present with anticipation to be a witness for the person who is dying is sacred time. This is not unlike waiting for the birth of a child. And that is something that I actually, when I talk with families, I actually share that with them as far as um, there is similarities between the waiting for the anticipation of a child to be born and the anticipation of a loved one to die. It is all sacred time. What are some of the other sacred times in your lives? 
I invite you to think about those. Of course, there is praying, attending church as we are today, attending a wedding or a funeral or a baptism or any other type of things which are traditionally thought of as being sacred times, even a bar mitzvah. Here are some examples of sacred time you might not have considered, or some of you may have. Meeting with a friend for coffee. Walking your dog. Going for a walk on the beach, whether by yourself or with a friend or a loved one. Folding laundry. Cooking a meal, whether for yourself or for others. Washing dishes. There's something very ritualistic for me about washing dishes or folding laundry. And for me, that really is sacred time. Talking on the phone with a parent or a sibling or a dear friend. Sitting outside listening to the birds sing. Being intimate with a partner. Something that I've done with your pastor, Will, is uh, participate in social justice actions. Those are very sacred times for me. And also dancing, whether by yourself, in your home, or in church, or at a club. There were numerous times in my younger days when I was out dancing in clubs where I could feel the sacredness and, the, and the, the joy that filled my heart from that time of dancing in a club with friends and surrounded by a bunch of people. These are all sacred times. In Romans today, it tells us that we can't afford to waste a minute, must not squander those precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence. I'm going to repeat that must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and, and indulgence. Frivolity and indulgence. I was really struck by those words. And I wanted to, I broke up my thesaurus to see what some other options were for those words, as opposed to just the definition of them. And some of the words for frivolity came, that was in the thesaurus said, merriment, levy, levity, goofiness, silliness, and gaiety. That's one of my favorites. It is important to make sacred time for merriment, levity, and silliness. Laughter fills our hearts with joy. And laughter goes up to God in heaven and allows God to know that we are happy and joy-filled. There is always time for merriment and levity. Of course, it is not always appropriate, and I do understand that. It is important to be childlike, filled with imagination and hope. Dr. Jonas Salk once said, hope lies in dreams, in imagination, and in courage of those who dare to make dreams into a reality. May we all make our dreams into reality, and may they all be filled with sacred time. And by, uh, excuse me, by also looking at the word indulgence, I also referred to my thesaurus again, and some of the words that came up for, for indulgence was kindness, service, grace, and mercy. Kindness to a stranger is sacred time. Kindness of feeding the homeless is sacred time. Being of service to others is something that many people probably in this room are very much aware of. Those who are standing up here, those who are in the pews, those who meet right at us at the door. People in 12-step recovery understand about being of service, about doing service work, working with others, helps to bring us to a different place in our lives and helps to create sacred time in those moments. Grace and mercy are essential in our lives, and we could all use more of them. In our gospel reading of Matthew today, it talks about those taken and those left behind. Those left behind are sometimes seen as the forgotten, the sinners, the forsaken. I'll be honest with you, I felt a bit challenged 
about today's reading in Scripture, or reading in uh, Matthew. And I needed to lean into my queerness and my education at Pacific School of Religion to be able to come up with some, some words to reflect to you today about this. Those left behind are not the forsaken. They are the bereaved. Reverend Jim Matulski, one of my mentors, taught me the importance of including current news in a sermon. This is a way of bringing in the present day life with scripture, which was written hundreds of, you know, thousands of years ago. And typically he used the New York Times as a resource, which is what I've also done today. So I have an article here from the New York Times. It was, uh, it's dated November 24th, which is three days ago. And its title, its, it's uh, headline is, After Three Mass Shootings, A Thanksgiving with 14 Empty Chairs. This article talks about the mass shootings that have happened in the last week. It describes a janitor working his shift at a uh, Virginia Walmart, a 40-year-old woman returning home to Colorado Springs for the holidays, a young man at his girlfriend's side watching her friend perform in a drag show. It talks about three college football players a mother who worked to help foster children, one bartender who remembered your drink, and another who danced. 14 people who did not know that their last Thanksgiving was already behind them, that their, that their last Thanksgiving was already behind them. On this last Tuesday's rampage of the six people who were killed at the Walmart in Chesapeake, Virginia, it was the 33rd mass shooting in the United States in November alone. And according to the Gun Violence Archive, that mass shooting was the 606th one this year. I want to let that number sink in for all of us. 606th mass shooting this year. Of those mass shootings, besides those six I mentioned at Walmart in Virginia, was five people at the Club Q in Colorado Springs, as well as those uh, three students in Virginia, University of Virginia. I would like to sh read their names to honor them. At the University of Virginia was Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry. At Club Q in Colorado Springs was Daniel Aston, Kelly Loving, Ashley Pugh, Raymond Green Vance, and Derek Rump. And at the Walmart in Virginia, Lorenzo Gamble, Kelly Pyle, Brian Pendleton, Tanika Johnson, Randy Blevins. All of those left behind are not the forsaken. They are the bereaved. And let us not forget those who survived the Pulse nightclub ma mass shooting in Orlando in 2016, or those who were left behind at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012. Those left behind are not the bereaved, forsaken, they are the bereaved. As Romans tells us, be up and awake to what God is doing. Every precious moment we have in this life is sacred. Sacred time with our families, sacred time with our loved ones, with our friends, sacred time with our church family, sacred time with each other. Those of us left behind are not the forsaken. We are the bereaved, and our time together is sacred. Encountering the holy in our lives goes beyond praying and attending church. The sacred, the holy, can be found in every aspect of our life. As Father Roar's book, in Father Roar's book, The Universal Christ, he wrote, 
And I quote, I have never been separate from God, nor can I be, except in my mind, end quote. I invite each one of you to re-examine many of the everyday aspects of your life. Look where the holy might be present, where profane acts are actually sacred ones. Look for God in all aspects of your life, in the uncomfortable times and especially in the uncomfortable times. All of these are sacred times. I would like to close with an excerpt from the poem, The Sacred and the Profane, by Lizzie Finn. What if I could honor both the sacred and the profane? No sins to be forgotten, no redemption preordained. No need for me to sacrifice ecclesiastic bliss. I'd find enchantment and euphoria in nature's simple kiss. There'd be no wars or will to fight. There'd be no darkness, only light. There'd be no blindness, only sight. There'd be no pain, no hate, no spite. Amen. During this time of hybrid worship, and we're still not comfortable passing the plates, please place your offerings in the plates on the table here during our offertory or the closing hymn, or you can place your offerings in the, at, in the, com, com, excuse me, in the plate in the back on your way out. If you cannot give in person, we ask that you send your offerings online or by mail to me, Merdell, and my address is in the announcements and the e-blast. Wait, wait a minute. 7.52. <laughs> I'm on the wrong page and I need the music. I mean, I need the words. Okay, 7.52. Mm -hmm. I was on 7.88 and it didn't work. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'm ready, 7.52.
spirit of life and hope, we turn our minds and hearts again towards thee. Awaken us again to the mysteries that humble us, the realities that orient us, the truths that judge and guide us, the beauty that informs and ravishes us, the love that nurtures us, the fellowship that sustains us, the creativity that heightens and deepens and reorders our living that we may give ourselves in honesty and openness to the larger life before us. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As it says in our bulletin, we too often think that something sacred is far away and not available to us. This Advent season, we are reframing the way we recognize the sacred reflected all around and through us. As we prepare to move into the world, we begin to reframe our view of the world and our circumstances, illuminating new ways of being the Christ anointed one, tangibly present. Christ means anointed one. Anointing this oil has long been a sacred sign of holiness. The Christ is reflected in and through all things, including sacred time. This week, you are invited to take a bit of oil or lotion and touch it to your forehead or the back of your hand one time each day when you set aside some sacred time for awe and wonder. When you arrived here this morning, Nora and Roberto gave you a small vial of oil at the door. Um, and for those of you worshiping with us at home, hopefully you received a small vial in the mail. If not, please contact Gail or Elaine. And uh, you could feel free to get a little olive oil from your kitchen or cabinet. Perhaps it will be each morning as you get ready and you stop for a moment and say a prayer of gratitude. Perhaps it will be during a time of devotional reading or journaling. Perhaps it will be in your car before you head home on your commute from work. Or perhaps you will do this with your family just before bedtime. The way you set aside time is up to you. Repeating the same time frame each day is helpful to establish a rhythm. The anointing is a physical way to help us remember that we are one with Christ, the anointed, and with each other, and all of creation. So um, with our little vial or at home, let us pray. O oh God, we bless this oil for the use of our church members this Advent. May it help each of us connect more with the claims you made on us in our baptisms, and may we be your anointed people serving those in need. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Last 
Take a moment to look around at all of the light that's in this sanctuary. Repeat it. <laughs> Take a moment to look around at all of the light in the sanctuary and carry it in your heart as you leave today. Amen. Let us send each other forth with the words. When you see lights twinkle, when you catch a reflection in a mirror, when you notice the sunlight dancing on a surface or a night light glowing in the darkness, let these be signs that the Christ light is revealed again and again in and through this world. Know that your brilliant presence is pouring more hope into a weary world. God loved us by becoming us. This means you are already reflecting the sacred. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Spirit of Hope. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, Joanne. Can I give this to you? Absolutely. Nice to see you, Anne. Thank you so much. It was a beautiful service. Yeah, I thought it came out pretty nice. Once I figured out the sound thing, that helped. <laughs> it worked really well. Was the sound better this week than last week? Yes, I think so. Yeah, that's what I thought, because last week it was um, just coming from my camera. Um, and this week I was able to get it direct from the box. So like it's supposed to be. <laughs> so I hope you had a good I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. I did. Did you? Yeah. Good. You can rest one more day before school. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you have a good week oh, ahead. Yep, we just have uh, two left online. And yeah. <laughs> okay, so it was nice to see the two of you online, and we had, I think, four people at the height of it. <laughs> Oh, did we have four eventually? Yeah, I think we had four total. Yep. Did you send me the list? Oh, Any there today? So anyway, I'm going to have to um, pack up this stuff, but it was nice to see you. Glad okay. you could make it. Thank you so much. You have a good week. You too. Okay. Bye-bye.